Hey everyone, the team here at NeoJack Entertainment have decided it would be a good idea to show everyone just how easy it is to link up the Atavism server system with an existing Unity project. For today's example we are going to use the Bootcamp project which is available for free on the Unity Asset Store. I will put a disclaimer in to say though that while the project is an FPS one, that we do not currently support FPS with the Atavism server. It's just a good project to use as an example of linking up a multiplayer system. So first thing we'll look at the requirements for the system. You will need Unity, now the free version should be fine. You'll need the Atavism server files and you'll need MySQL, the community edition which is free is fine. The server only runs on Windows or Linux, so you will need to make sure you have access to one of those systems for the server. So we've covered the requirements, and I'm not going to look at installing Unity or MySQL, but we are going to look at setting up the Atavism server. So we'll start off by extracting the files from the RAR that's been provided. And I'm just going to move this to my C drive because it makes it easier for the rest of the uh, demonstration. Go on here we've got all these files that we can use. We'll first work with the database. So we can see here if we go into SQL there's a whole bunch of files and even some more in here. We only need to worry about two of them so what we'll do is go into the command line for MySQL. Let's put the password in there and we just need to source a couple of those files to set up the content database and the database keeps track of all your player and other object uh, progression. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it helps if you know a little bit of um, SQL, I guess. So, atavism slash SQL slash one done. And the second one, so we can just use the old one content slash base. This one will take a bit longer, so I may skip forward. Okay, so we have all our databases now set up, and all you need to do really is start the server. There can be some properties um, that we can change if we want to, but by default it's set up to run on the local host, just your computer by itself. If you want to connect remotely, we'll have to change some properties and I'll cover that at the end of the video. But at the moment, it is all ready to go. So I'll bring up the command line. And it's just a matter of starting the two servers. You've got the authentication server and the world server. So we start the authentication server. Looks good. And now the world server. And it print out a whole lot of rubbish, you don't need to worry too much about that. As long as it's saying success, it's um, looking pretty good. If you see failed, then there are problems that you all need to look into. Okay, all looking good. A whole lot of extra stuff printed out that we don't need to worry about at the moment. So we've got the database set up and now we have the server set up. The next step is to look at Unity itself. I'm now in Unity and the first thing we need to do is import the asset packages. The first asset package is the Bootcamp package and that is available on the Unity Asset Store for free. So we'll just find our way there. And I have already downloaded it before, so in my case I can just click import. And this does take quite a long time, so I will just skip ahead until it has been fully imported. With the bootcamp asset package imported, the last thing we need to import is the Atavism files themselves. So we go to import a custom package, and I have it conveniently located on my desktop. And this package is a lot smaller, should only take um, less than a minute to import. So hit import and I'll skip ahead once. 
So now that we've got all the assets imported, we'll go up to this Atavism menu up here and we'll just make sure we can connect to the database. So I've already got the host name, user and password put in. We can click test and we can see that we've got success there and we'll do the same for the admin database. Now that connection is needed to be able to set some of the game content and settings from inside Unity itself. Just a nice little feature we'll put in to make it much easier than having to go into the database um, through the command line or through some other program. So now we've got the database connection um, confirmed, we will set up a character. Now this was the trickiest part when setting up the bootcamp project. We had to take one of their prefabs, I'll open it up here, we've got the soldier prefab that they provide, and basically we need to strip out quite a lot from it, change the movement, uh, scripts, that kind of stuff, into something that works with uh, the atavism system. So we've got the prefab here. What I'm going to do is actually grab the soldier uh, child and pull it out from the parent. So we'll continue. We can delete the parent now. Basically we need to cut out most of these uh, components. So don't need the animations. We'll keep the character controller in there that is used. And the footsteps and the audio, um, they can stay, it's not a big issue. Just many things to do with movement and animations are the biggest effectors. But we do want to keep an animation component on there as well. So in the end we're left with the animation component, the character controller, uh, the footsteps and the audio source. We will add a mob controller, which is used for the atavism system and we'll just set the animations for that. So it needs an idle animation. This is just telling it what to play in different states. We do also have support for um, the other animation systems that Uni Unity provides, but for this example, since we're already using the, the animation component, we'll just follow that setup. So give it a walk. For the demonstration at the moment, we just need a idle walk, run, and a jump. Let's make it a run jump. Okay, and now our character pretty much is ready. We will need to make a resources folder. And turn our soldier there. I'll just remove a couple of these components as well to the camera, because they can interfere. So yeah, we've now got a stripped down soldier, and we'll turn him into a prefab, and we are... Now that we've got our uh, prefab ready, we will look at making the changes to the main bootcamp scene. So we'll delete that, head into the bootcamp scene. Now that the bootcamp scene has loaded, the first thing we want to do is set up this scene so it is in our list of instances that the server knows about. So if we click on the, insta uh, the Atavism menu and go down to Instances, click Create New. Now the name does need to match the scene name exactly. This is how Unity knows what scene to load up when you're going into different instances. So we've got the name Bootcamp, we will get it to create on startup, and then we need to set a default spawn location for when you go into this instance. So in this case, we can drag the soldier locomotion here in, and it should be giving us a position X, Y, Z for us to uh, work with. Here we go, and then we click Save Data. Now that the instance has been added to the list of instances on the server, we will need to give the server a restart for it to know about that, but we will deal with that a little later. The first thing we want to deal with in the scene is now to remove the soldier from it. The atavism system itself will load in that prefab we created before when you spawn into the world. So we'll hit delete, 
and then we just need to add in a world camera and the scene is ready to go we'll set file save and we'll move on to what's almost the last part is going to this login scene this login scene is provided with the uh, the package before we can hit play we've got a few last things we need to set we need to make sure the client knows where the server is so we have set that here to localhost and we need a world ID so I have called this one ghost the next thing we need to do is set up which character we want um, you know, our players to be so we'll use the soldier prefab drag it in there and we set which scene to spawn in uh, by default so we've got boot camp now we can set some skins there for the login UI so I will just use the HUD skin that's been provided and it is pretty much ready to go the final step before we do click play and I forget this all the time is to add the scenes to the build settings so we'll save the scene and go build settings and we will need to do it for the boot camp as well with the connection settings now set up and the scenes added to the build settings we can finally click play we can create an account if we need to I already have one so I'll log on with that and we'll need to create a character it's as simple as putting in a name hit create it takes a moment for the server to process that click on a character and enter okay we have just spawned inside the bootcamp world does look pretty good and so that completes the basic flow so our character now is able to run around this world using our atavism controller can run and jump now if I'd open up my server to other players I would better see them running around and they would better see me but I have made this a local only server at the moment so it is just me inside but next I'm going to show you a demonstration of um, the same server setup but with multiple people inside just prove to you that the system does work with multiple players being able to see each other in the world okay so I've made a, another copy of the server on a remote server now and I'm going to do a quick demonstration of the multiplayer capabilities so I've set up the game in the web player and put it online and got a couple of the other employees to log in so we'll now log in and join them I've already made my character and we'll jump in the world and here we go so with any luck we should be able to find the other employees around somewhere yeah I think we found them down here couple of other guys so as I run down here that would have instantly updated for them got a little chat box going as well so I can say hey they're gonna say hey back and yeah we'll take a little run along the bridge here you can see us all updating instantly all looking pretty good and so with not much work at all we've been able to set up a multiplayer example demonstration uh, using the boot camp have yeah multiple players running around and interacting we haven't done combat yet that is a bit more complicated but for the basics it's all looking pretty good